Awesome. So uh, my name is Nicole, and we are doing a noob intro to Hacker Summer Camp and putting together a playlist so that all of you who haven't attended things at DEF CON or maybe never have been to DEF CON before get a quick intro. And with us, we have Toxic Barbecue. Dan, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and the Toxic Barbecue? Sure. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, so uh, my name is Dan Hill. I am a, I am just, I'm a longtime attendee of DEF CON uh, and I am part of the team that runs Toxic Bar the Toxic Barbecue, which is an off-site event for DEF CON. That is, we kind of consider ourselves the uh, uh, an unofficial welcome party or one of the first things. It's a, lo a lot of people will, uh, it is, it's off-site and all volunteer run. We don't take sponsorships or do anything like that. But the, the aim of it is just to have people come out and get to take a breather after the after line con and after registration and getting merch maybe and just take a breather meet with friends meet new friends have some food since they probably won't be getting a good meal <laughs> not not at the prices uh, we saw this year <laughs> yeah and it's it's all volunteer run and also volunteer funded we don't take any named sponsorships uh, it, we do take donations. So that's how we fund our operations through to wholly through uh, donations. It's on Thursday, which is a rarity because there's not many things happening at DEF CON on Thursday. Uh, the, the, it's on Thursday afternoon um, where the fires usually light about three o'clock. So we have food starting about four and we run all the way until, until uh, we start cleanup at about nine. So if somebody wanted to come, do they need to bring anything with them, meat, paper plates, spork, or maybe just some money for a donation? How does that work if they've yeah, just if, want to if, show up? If you've got, if you're at a loss, it's just come with money for a donation. And we, we take, you know, in the past, it's cost us about 10 bucks a head <clears throat> in order to fund the entire barbecue. So, and that's probably that's a lot the cheaper, cheapest cheaper. dinner in Vegas I have ever heard of. <laughs> Yeah, so, and then you just uh, grab some friends, come out, uh, grab a cab, or if you've got a car, there are grocery stores within a block of the van, of the uh, of the park. So, the, the, if the, if you're, if you're wondering if you want to come out, it's, it's kind of hot, so drink lots yeah, of water. Yeah, are there tents, or is it just all <laughs> out in the sun? We are actually at a very shady park called Sunset Park. It's one of the biggest parks in Vegas. It's down uh, right near the airport, just where you can see the planes, you can watch the planes land, but we're under a big pavilion and we've got plenty of shade. Uh, and there's some tables and stuff like that. You might be able to grab a seat, but it's mostly just spread out on the grass, have a burger. Uh, we've got vegetarian options as well, if you're, if you're worried about that. Uh, get a drink and bring some stuff that you would enjoy having and you would enjoy sharing. It's really all that it takes, and the and a lot of so we run. We've been we've been doing this for like the current team's been doing this. I think this was our eighth year. So we're going into we're coming up on the tenth year, depending on how you count it with the pandemic and canceled and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, time gets really weird around. Yeah, that. we have to count every year. We're like, did was it that anyway? But um, but the we're coming up on coming up on that. We we weren't we aren't the first people to run this right. It started out. Scotland is a is a longtime DefCon personality, and um, she started this way back in the day uh, as just a kind of a get together for people. She lived in Vegas, worked here, and would have people out to the park. They did it, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. And there's just like started from rumor. Hey, there's this thing that we do, and that's how I got introduced to it. Right. We, I showed up to DEF CON. I was doing like PCI DSS or some like, you know, check, checklist security at a, at a credit card company. And, um, I was like, Hey, I'm going to go to DEF CON because I want to see how it's really, what really, what we should really be worried about. And, All right. Instead uh, of just this list, what are the real problems? <laughs> and, uh, I ended up at Toxic Barbecue with some friends who'd been going to DEF CON for a while and it's, I, I still talk to about half the people that I met that day. And that is, that's, that's exactly the kind of experience that I want to recreate that we that we try to recreate every year. It's just like, it doesn't matter if you're a noob, doesn't matter if you're a veteran, 
come out to Toxic. You'll find someone fun to talk to. You'll find something fun to do. You'll have some good food. And then you can start your DEF CON off right. Well fed, exhausted. Go to, you know, get your three, two, one in and then uh, let the uh, let the madness begin. So Yeah, I love that because I always tell people who are coming, it's like, be friendly and you will probably find someone friendly. It's a very <laughs> large event, so there will be a certain percentage of unfriendly people. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people come to <laughs> Hacker Summer Camp with the goal of either making friends, seeing existing friends, learning cool stuff. Yeah. So most people are pretty chill. Yeah, it's it's no. a party. Like, that's the, the intent is for it to be a party of well, everyone. Speaking with the- of party... If somebody had either like small kids or booze, are kids and booze allowed into the park? We have a limited amount of booze available. Uh, it's not. It's not. This is not like shots and 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 heavy pours. Kind of. This is like a community barbecue, right? So people are walking. So like, around. bring a six pack with you when you show yep. up, type thing. Correct. Yep. And then we might. We'll also call. We also call. When I say volunteers, I mean like I will. Yeah, I will get on the megaphone and yell and see if anyone wants to go make an ice run. Right. So if you have a rental. You might be asked to to make an ice run or to go uh, to sh- to to cart me over to buy more burgers because we ran out, um, or you know get a, get a group of your friends together and make a beer run, make a you know go get go get some sides, go get some stuff like that, you know bring some chips. It's you know what it's what you make of it, just like at DEF CON, it's what you make of it. So what would you like to see? We do stock the larder at the beginning of the day. We bought last year, we did a run to Costco and we went through uh, 800 burgers oh. and 500 hot dogs. <laughs> so that the, is but, impressive and a terrifying amount of meat. It's a terror. It's it, so we've, we've got it. We've got it. We had to have a system down to get through all that. But other than that, it's like sides, drinks, uh, libations, uh, you know, nothing too hard. And then um, stuff you would like to have at a barbecue. We got, you know, and we'll we'll get it served and we'll get it through. We'll get it into people. We have uh, we have some other. There's also it's also a community sharing of an opportunity to share your hobbies event. We have uh, we have some sideshows on this. We have, for example, Peppercon. If you if you know what Peppercon is, I think it's something to do with like spicy sauces. Yeah, so like a, p- p- a bunch of people grow their own like Carolina Reapers, and then they'll make a spice mix for the year, and then they'll go around and uh, share that with people. Um, they had they they just pay people who are enthusiastic about uh, about the growing and preparation of spicy things. It's DC Peppercon. They have their own shirts. It's a whole thing. Once you see it, you'll you'll get it. That that kind of you have to experience it to get it right. Um, we have a homebrew. Uh, exposition so people will bring their homebrew uh, beer we've had mead this year we had a really good plum mead that was that was shared around uh, and as well as cheeses and all sorts of things so if you if you make things that are you know that are shareable at a barbecue bring it and we will share it we will make sure that it gets in people and you can talk to people who have similar so- it sounds like there is potentially little subgroups that could do prep in advance. You said like the people who really like to grow peppers to do homebrew. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there any other particular subgroups where if somebody's like, yes, I homebrew. And so obviously you need to start at least, you know, 15 weeks ahead of time for that. <laughs> Anything else for the people who need to like maybe get started a little early if they're super stoked to bring something? Yeah, it's just reach out. We've got, um, we do have our, on our website, you can do a volunteer form. So if you have any specific questions, you can just send it to, you can send it to the email to the info at toxicbarbecue.org uh, if with specific questions or um, get your friends, plan something. If you want to publicize it to see if you can cast a wider net, let us know. Um, but it's, it's really just what you make of it. If you think it would fit, then we'll try it out. For example, one year we had a DJ and then we realized why people come to Toxic is not for the music. You got four days of music. You got you know three days of music at DEF CON. But Toxic, we try to keep the music to a, to a minimum, uh, so we don't have so much so much in your ears, so you can hear the people around you. But like um, actually have conversations without shouting. You know, exactly. For a change. Oh. Um, and but like we've had. We had Ham Radio Village has come out and and thrown an antenna over over the trees and done uh, APRS uh, demonstrations on site. We've had we had a, a guy, uh, there was one who hasn't been able to show up these last couple of years because of family stuff, 
but these he brought his own he brought basically a big panel van full of his own cider that he brews and he rolls out a a, a kegerator full of full of his his best that's all oh, wow. d- out so you can see you can see kind of the le- and you know or it's just like this year we had elk alligator and wild boar bacon show up randomly so if there's something you're passionate about and you'd like to contribute that's really that's really what it takes and it's you know we try to keep it food centric but if it can happen in a park it's going to happen so you bring it by we'll love awesome. to have it. for, for now- volunteer wise um you, you can was, also if, yeah go ahead yeah i was wondering like when do you need your volunteers is that something where like if somebody wanted to volunteer like right away they could do that or do you generally start looking in like june when is kind of your vibe for we actually need you know people now yeah so we've got a central core group of organizers that work all year long to make sure we have a little bit of swag and a little bit of uh spice in the event uh, as soon as we get, it's usually Jan- January, whenever DEF CON starts releasing their theming. Uh, this year was Engage, so of course we did the cheap thing, which was uh, steal the Star Trek logo. Um, and I mean, that, that was asking for it, pretty right? much. Right, you know, and <laughs> so, but with that came, to, when it came down to print the shirts, because we do we do some fundraisers throughout the year to, to kind of pre-fund the barbecue, and no one would print our shirts, so that might not have been the smartest thing. Uh, for cop for you know for trademark infringement but yeah. whatever uh, we got around it um, but like that so we're working all year just here and there trying to make trying to do something fun and keep it interesting but really what it is on the day of we have three core main core groups of volunteers which are the people who help with setup the people who staff the grill as well as the people who uh, who help clean up and do the exodus. And, and uh, if you volunteer for any of those groups, uh, we try to get you some extra swag. And you're there early and you can you meet people, you work with people working alongside with people, you'll meet you'll meet some of our some of our long term volunteers who've helped us help, who've also loved this this event enough to come back year over year. Just make it happen. Um, that is the amazing part about the community is people will volunteer, they will pay to show up in Vegas and they will pay to <laughs> attend something and then they'll still work through the whole thing. Yeah, it's it's very much it's very much how we do like, you know, I'm going to a conference. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to I'm going to break computers all weekend. And then but before that, I'm going to barbecue in 100 degree weather. Uh, OK. All right. And that's fun for I know. mean, it is fun. It, it sounds it sounds amazing to me. I'm like that sounds great, but you know, the um the the really great thing is no matter who we meet at the barbecue, they find their niche here. It's just we try to make a, a welcoming place for every per, every single person. So awesome. And you had mentioned like some shirts and swag. Is that something that you sell in advance, or is that only at the event? So if somebody wanted to get in on buying the swag or supporting your event yeah we usually go we usually try to do a t-shirt sale we've been we have been doing a t-shirt sale in advance we're working on that because we don't we don't we try not to do too much it's all volunteer so we don't want to have inventory and things like that so we make um we do a t-shirt sale in advance we'll announce on the socials uh so watch for hashtag toxic barbecue uh for that the um you we are trying to we've we've always talked about doing like an sao or some other types of blinky things. Um, uh, so if you, so we are, so that is something that that you might see. I don't know. We'll see what we get off the ground this year. But there's also, uh, in the past, we've done things like coaster sets for people who have shown up and really just worked hard all day. We have we have uh, coasters that have the logo on them that we've the the toxic barbecue logo on that you can take home. And remember that. Um, we have other types of swag for people who work the grill or, and everyone is welcome to walk away with a button so that when they, so that you can put it on there, remember coming to toxic barbecue. So that is awesome. And I feel you on the inventory when you made the mistake <laughs> of saying that we would ship things oh, and after that year. Uh, it was like the post COVID year. A lot of people were mm-hmm. like, well, we're not going to be there in person. We learned our lesson and we will never ever mail things again. Ever. No. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, and we're, and so, you know, and with any of these, it's, if you're going to volunteer at DEF CON, if you're going to do something for DEF CON, it's, it's a party. Make sure you're having fun too, you know, and that's what we always aim. It's like we're not sticking you on the grill for six hours. 
we're uh, making sure you get watered and fed and uh, getting you off there in an hour so you can go hang out with your friends, you know, uh, or you can bring your friends up. You'll, we'll put you on the crew together and then you can, you can hang out for as long as you're, as long as you're, as long as you want. And then, then we'll get someone else on there. Cause we want everyone to have a chance to, to contribute here. And uh, you said that you basically showed up one year and then suddenly now you're running it. Like how <laughs> did that happen? <laughs> So um, Scotland was Scotland was the first uh, back in 2000. I can't remember the exact year, 2003 or four that started pulling people together, and they they came to this out to here to Sunset Park. Um, the then they handed it off to uh, to Grave Robber, who and then I think they, she might've handed it off to someone else as well. Like there's, 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 it's been through so many hands, but people just keep wanting to run the event. Which right? just shows how much fun everyone's having. Cause if everyone just wants it to keep surviving and is willing to step yep. up, then obviously lots of people are loving it. Yeah. Grave robber couldn't, grave robber couldn't have, couldn't come out to DEF CON one year and was like, sorry, we're not doing the barbecue. And uh, we couldn't have that. So, and then this, now it's eight years later. So, <laughs> so, you know, this is, it's just a labor of love up and down. Yep. And then for, like you mentioned that you have, you know, your email address, what other ways is there? Do you have Twitter? Do you have Mastodon? Do you have a website? Like where should people follow to get information? I know that we're going to put a link to the sign in uh, the notes here, uh, but yeah, what specific places can people find you? Uh, so toxicbarbecue.org. It's uh, we've got we've got a site there that usually has all the right information, and it'll get updated throughout the year uh, with uh, ongoing things like fundraisers or do or donation drives, things like that. Um, or and there's a volunteer sheet. There's a volunteer sign up on that site as well uh, that you can just send your info, and we will reach out to you when when DefCon gets close. Um, the on social wise, I try to use the hashtag toxic barbecue. So just search that. Uh, also, just searching it, usually you'll find me squawking on any number of social sites uh, Mastodon, Blue Sky, and uh, Twitter for now. Uh, the, the best way to get a hold of us is probably just volunteer and then ping. If you need any specific stuff, send me an email. Send me an email through the uh, through the site, and we'll make sure we get back to you. All right, and I guess any last notes for people who, you know, are like they're like this sounds kind of interesting. Like, what is that final nudge you could give them to be like, yes, you really want to come here after Line Gone? Yeah, uh, just think about how you'll feel having. If you're intimidated by the temperatures, we're we're in the shade. It's not that bad. It's a dry heat. But also, um, just think about just think about what your next four days are going to be like. What your next three days are going to be like if you can start it off right outside, in and having a barbecue with your friends in the uh, and and meeting some great new people, and then seeing them all around the con, you know, for the next three days, four days, uh, you'll be wandering around and just see someone you saw at the barbecue and be able to strike up a conversation. It's a great way to just get started, take a deep breath and and go and it's only a cab right away so um yeah well you've definitely uh sold me uh if i wasn't running a village i would probably be there <laughs> but uh you know how that goes you can only do so many things in a day <laughs> yeah yep. well place. uh thank you so much for uh coming on thank you so much thanks for having me circuit swan circuit swan